Week seven, quarterback changes. Let's pick some games. What is up, my football fans? Week seven, time to give picks. Uh, I got my dad's picks, I got my picks, and then uh, we got, you know, the huge. I'm going to talk about some things, talk about some quarterback changes, get to one of your guys' comments of the day. Really good comment. I like this one, obviously, because I picked it. But let's jump into this week. So last week, me and my dad both went eight and six. We both had the same exact record. We uh, obviously had different games picked, so we had different picks, but we had the same Eight and six, me and him both. So right now, this is his, which is uh, 55, 36, and one. And this is mine, which is 53, 38, and one. He's got a two-game lead on me right now, but there's still a lot of season left to play. So far, we are well over 500. Uh, not too great, but not too bad when it comes to picking. Last week was probably one of my worst pick weeks to pick. Some games, like the Chiefs game, when I thought they were going to win, they ended up not winning because, you know, why not? It's like my fantasy football team. Drew Brees gets injured. People that I put on the bench because they suck end up playing great. And people that play great, you put them in, they suck. But let's jump into these picks. We got tomorrow night's or now tonight's game. Yeah, this is going to come out Thursday. So tonight's game, we got the Chiefs heading to Denver to take on the Broncos. Now, when the season started, you probably looked at this game. You got you got Joe Flacco, you got the Broncos taking on Patrick Mahomes and Hill and all these, you know, Travis Kelsey and all these guys and the Chiefs. It's going to be a whomping. The Chiefs are going to beat them down with no remorse. And then you kind of were right because the Broncos started real bad. The Chiefs started real good. But lately, the Broncos have been doing real good and the Chiefs have been doing bad. Uh, Chiefs are giving three points in this game. Me and my dad are still going to take the Chiefs in this one. Me and my dad are still both going to take the Chiefs. Um, we're, we think that they're going to bounce back. We think that Patrick Mahomes, hopefully, I know he's he's got a little bit of an ankle injury that's kind of limiting his mobility. But we still think, now, don't get us wrong, Denver is got a great defense. Their defense is still keeping them in games and helping them win games. Defense wins championships. It is what it is. So, yes, me and my dad are both taking the Chiefs. Don't be surprised if Denver keeps this close. Don't be surprised. If you're going to bet, I'd still take the Chiefs. I still think the Chiefs will win by a touchdown. I think that, you know, Andy Reid's going to pull something out of his ass, and I think that the Chiefs are going to win by a touchdown. So, for me, if you're betting, I'd still bet the Chiefs. I think that the Chiefs will cover the spread. Then we got the Jacksonville Jaguars hending, hending. What is hending, Doug? What is hending? Heading to Cincinnati to take on the Bengals. Uh, Bengals are winless. Dolphins are winless. The only two winless teams left. Um, Bengals, you know, taking on the Jags. Jags are given three and a half in this one. Me and my dad are both going to... Oh, no. Sorry. Sorry, Dad. I didn't mean to, to jump on, on your toes. I'm taking the Jaguars in this. My dad's going to take the Bengals in this one. He thinks that the Bengals are going to take down Minshew. Uh, they're, Jam they're Jalen Ramsey-less. That's a tongue twister. They're Jalen Ramsey list. Try to say that five times fast. So I can see where my dad's coming with with the Bengals, but the Bengals are just struggling. Their head coach is just struggling. You know, Andy Dalton is a capable quarterback. I honestly think that the Bengals will win about two or three games this year. But I'm just liking the Jaguars. Now, without Jalen Ramsey, that might tip the scales in the Bengals you know, favor. So maybe my dad will get this one and he'll take a three point lead on me. But, you know, Jags are given three and a half. Minshew, their wide receiver Clark. I'm I'm taking the stick with the Jags. I like the Jags in this one. And we got the Minnesota Vikings heading to Detroit to take on the Lions. The Vikings are only given one. My dad's taking the Lions in this one. The Lions. Let's talk about this real quick because I know if any of you Lion fans are watching this, you have every right to be super pissed. Super pissed about Monday night's game. Hands to the face twice. The second one was just complete another BS because you saw his hand hit his shoulder. Nowhere near his neck or face area. Stupid calls. Left and right. That hands to the face essentially, um, I wouldn't say gave them the game. 
you know, they probably would have still went for it on fourth down or tried to still attempt to kick the field goal, but maybe would have kept more time and Detroit possibly could have came back. But the refs need to stop controlling these games and the refs need to stop affecting outcomes of games. Like, it needs to stop happening. They put in a pass interference challenges and it's not doing anything because the challenges aren't being overturned when they should be. It's just complete BS. It's like the Chiefs game... Uh, last week, which I should have talked about, but we're talking about refs now, where it was, the flag was thrown because it was pass interference. So Patrick Mahomes just throws the ball up. He's like, there's a penalty on the field. Screw it. Free play, free pass. Interception, right? So you're like, oh, well, they're going to give the ball back. They pick the flag up because they're like, it's not pass interference. But then they still keep the interception. But it was, there was interference. It was just Oh, just these refs need to be held accountable. Me personally, if they keep messing up, you get you got to do something. And I know there's human error, but it you can't it can't get to the severity that it is now, and it can't affect games. You would think after the Saints Rams game where it was a blatant pi that these refs would start to get their heads out of their asses. It don't seem like it's gonna happen. All right, I just want to get on a little rant because of the Lions game, but I'm taking the Vikings. My dad's taking the Lions. Um, I honestly like the way the Vikings are playing. Uh, Stephen Diggs was played really great last week, um, and I'm just gonna. I like the Vikings defense better than I like the Lions defense, so that's why I'm taking that one. They got the Raiders heading up to Lambeau to take on the Packers. The Packers are giving five. My dad's taking the Raiders in this one. I'm gonna say go Pack go five and one right now. I think they're gonna need another win. I'm taking the Packers in this one. Got the struggling Rams with now Jalen Ramsey, who's magically, magically healthy enough to potentially play this game when he was having issues when he was on the Jaguars. Funny how that works, huh? Heading to Atlanta to take on the Falcons. Me and my dad are both taking the Rams. I'm not taking the Rams because I think Jalen Ramsey is gonna be a, a magic pill that all of a sudden the Rams are going to turn it around. I honestly still like the Rams and I think that the Atlanta Falcons are struggling a little bit. So that's why I'm taking the Rams. Then we got the Texans heading to the Colts. I, for some reason, did not write down the spread on that one because I'm a big dumb dumb. But this one I had a hard time with. My dad took the Texans and I sat there and I was like, Texans, Colts, Texans, Colts. Brissett is playing really well. Um, their running back, Mac is playing really well. You know, T.Y. Hilton's T.Y. Hilton. The defense is still playing really well. Their offensive line is still playing really well. And then you got the Texans, who are coming coming down. You know, I think they're 4-2 right now. They're playing really well as well. Just, beat, like I said, beat the Chiefs. Um, Larry Tunsil, just side note, is one of the best left tackles in the league. And he's completely helping out the Texans. To them, the giving us two first is well worth it to us. We'll take the two first. It really does, again, I said, I, talk, I already talked about it. Go back and look at videos if you want to hear what I have to say about the trade. Um, but I really was like, oh, Texans cult, Texans cult. And I'm going to pick the Texans. Uh, the reason I'm picking the Texans is I do think there's a chance that they could pull this off and they could win this. Not saying that they're pulling it off like there's no chance. But technically when I pick them, when I don't pick them, they tend to win. So me as a Dolphin fan, I want to hire draft picks. So let's flip it over and see if it goes the other way. I'm sorry, Texans fans. But well, we have your first, and I want better picks. Uh, then we got the 49ers heading to Washington to take on the Redskins. Washington eked out a win against the Miami Dolphins because we went for two instead of the one. Not saying much about the Redskins, is it? 49ers are undefeated right now, playing great. Defense is playing great. Joey Bosa, not Joey Bosa, his brother uh, is playing great. Nick Bosa, sorry, is playing great. Garoppolo is playing great. It's just the 49ers are just clicking on all cylinders. And will they go undefeated? No, I don't think so. Will the Patriots go undefeated? No, I still don't think so. We'll talk about that in two seconds. 49ers give nine and a half. Me and my dad are both taking the 49ers. Redskins barely beat the Dolphins, and they're not good. They're not good. If the Redskins would have beat, uh, would have lost to the Dolphins, the Redskins would probably go all in 16. Because I would look at the rest of their schedule, and it's tough. Tough as nails, and supposedly Haskins might play because Keenum is banged up. So then they got the cards heading here, where I am in my neck of the woods. Uh, to play the Giants. Wow, there's two games in my neck of the woods. Wow. Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, Giants are given three. This was another one that I was like, ah. Cards, are, cards won last week and they're on a, on, you know, 
going on an upswing, and the Giants are kind of going on a downswing, but they did play the Patriots. My dad's taking the Giants. I'm going to also take the Giants. I think the cards heading from the West Coast to the East Coast is going to help the Giants. I think the Giants will pull this one off. Chargers heading to Tennessee to take on the Titans, the Ryan Tannehill-led Titans. Now, real quick, just want to pop something up real quick about what I said when it comes to Ryan Tannehill going to the Titans. I kind of said that he would start. I kind of said he, it, it would happen. Just want to pop this up real quick. He needs everything around him to be better for him to succeed. But I've also said to you guys, he's a very, very capable and a very good backup. Right now, with him on the Tennessee Titans as their backup, he's probably the best backup quarterback in the league right now. And just to show that, he's a capable backup. He's a capable quarterback. I never said Ryan Tannehill sucked. I never said Ryan Tannehill was horrible. I always knew that this time was going to come. Now, my dad's taken the Titans. I was going to initially take the Chargers, but the Chargers are banged up. And Ryan Tannehill, when he comes off the bench, is hot. Now, as a Dolphin fan to you Titan fans, I will say this. Ryan Tannehill is going to show you great things. Ryan Tannehill is going to have good games. Ryan Tannehill is going to get your hopes up. Just know this. He's a very good quarterback. He's a good quarterback, but he has his flaws. And his flaws have stuck, and his flaws will lose you games. Don't get too high and mighty on him. That's all I'm going to say. And to the Tan to a lot of Tannehill fans are probably going to rip on me right now. Again, I like Tannehill. I think Tannehill is great. I'm just expectations. Rather be surprised than let down. That's all I'm going to say. But uh, me and my dad are both taking the Tennessee Titans. We got the Saints heading to Chicago to take on the Bears. Bears are giving three. They're a home team. Giving three. My dad is taking the Bears. I'm going to take the Saints. Trubitsky. Not sold on them. Bears defense is a horse of a different color, but so is the Saints defense. Most scoring game, maybe like a 14-10 win for the Saints. I'm going to stick with the Saints. I know Kamara is dealing with an injury. I don't know if he's going to be playing or not, but I'm still going to take the Saints in this one. Then we got the Ravens heading to Seattle to take on the Seahawks. East Coast to West Coast game. My dad is going to take the Seahawks. I'm going to take the Ravens. Now, Listen, check this, because it's probably blasphemy, and he's probably going to get the uh, another game up on me. That's two games up on me, a before on me. Russell Wilson's playing ridiculous right now. Russell Wilson is playing lights out. Last week's game, Russell Wilson, for the last drive, had no uh, comms to his coach, and he was doing it all off the top of his dome. Calling plays, audibles, all off the top of his dome. Russell Wilson is ridiculous. I like the Ravens' defense, and I like what I can see out of Lamar Jackson. I'm picking the Ravens in this one. It's going to be a close game. I think it's going to be a fun game to watch. That's what I'm going with. And then we have the Philadelphia Eagles head into Dallas to take on the Cowboys. Cowboys are given three. Uh, my dad's taking the Cowboys. I'm taking the opposite in this one as well. Cowboys are struggling. Dak Prescott is – he's – Against the Jets, he started coming back. He started getting his groove. Going for that two-point conversion, that blitz up the middle. Jamal Adams, great call by the Jets. Because if not, they definitely would have got the two-point conversion. I think the Cowboys would have came back and won. Because that's just what happens with Adam Gase. I'm going to take the Eagles. I like the Eagles' offense in this one. And like I said, I just the Cowboys are on a downward spiral. And they're struggling here. Then we have the Monday night game. The New England Patriots. Nine and a half point giving to the Jets again here. So Sunday there's a game here in the Giants and then Monday there's a game here. If you live in my area and you're trying to get anywhere Monday night or even Monday, don't even do it. Same with Sunday. If you're trying to head north from me towards the stadium, just don't even do it. It's gonna be crazy town. So we have the Patriots coming here to take on the Jets. Now Patriots. Tom Brady's been struggling. The Patriots defense helped them win against the Giants last week. Tom Brady's been struggling um, and that defense has really been keeping him in there. The Jets, on the other hand, Sam Darnold came back last week, and Sam Darnold made some great plays. He had great pocket presence, was throwing some nice plays. He had that 90-yard touchdown pass, which was like a 15-yard pass, and then it's like 75 yards of running. Um, 20 went up 21-3 to three on the Cowboys, and then you know Cowboys came back eventually, lost by two. But the Jets' defense is something that you – should be paying attention to. Same thing with another team I'm going to talk about in two seconds. Jets defense is something you should be paying attention to. Now, me and my dad are both going to take the Patriots in this one. 
But don't be surprised if it's a close game and don't be surprised if the Patriots have a hard time in this game. Now, I'm a Dolphins fan. I hate both teams very much. Uh, but I hate the Patriots more than I hate the Jets. I'll be rooting for the Jets Monday night. And if the Jets win, I'll be happy because I hate the Patriots. And then I'll be rooting against the Jets for the rest of the season. Don't be surprised, like I said, if it's a close game. Jet fans from a Dolph fan, kick ass. Patriots fans, you know we hate you. You hate us. You tell us we suck and we're a crap organization. Hey, I can name seven or eight things that your organization has done that is horrible too. We hate each other. It's all in fun. I'm not malicious. Don't be malicious. <laughs> then we got the Finns at the Bills. That's not after Monday night. Obviously, it's. I think it's like one of the first games on the schedule. Uh, after the Thursday night game, my dad's taking the Dolphins. My dad loves the Dolphins. My dad will always pick the Dolphins. No matter what, he loves his Dolphins. He's picking the Dolphins. If you want to know what my pick is, again, you have to watch the preview video that comes out Friday. Got to watch that. Also, Josh Rosen got benched. Ryan Fitzpatrick is starting for the Dolphins. If you want to know how I feel about it, I will go into full detail about it on Friday in the preview video. But just to let you guys know, um, I understand why the move was made. You could see in Josh Rosen, he started to get a little frazzled. He started to get a little messed up. Again, before you comment below and start ripping me, for all you Josh Rosen fans, I will go into full detail about it on Friday. Just want to say Fitz is starting. Rosen is benched. Again, Friday, full detail, because I'm doing my preview video, Dolphins Bills Friday. So be sure to comment below. Let me know. If I picked your team, let me know. If I picked against your team, let me know. Give me your guys' picks. Comment below. I love reading your guys' comments. And let me get to one of your guys' comments of the day. This comment comes from Zachary Pratt Jr. So I'm again assuming your, your dad's name was Zachary. Uh, hello to him. And he says, at least from what we can see, Play calling has not been the problem, and we are not committing stupid penalties. That points to good coaching. Fitz is just savvy and knows the tricks of the trade throughout experience. He knows when to get out there. Rosen is still trying to get the playbook down, Pat. Pick this comment because it's the whole talk about Fitz starting Rosen getting benched. Again, I'll talk about that more uh, Friday, but the whole play calling, because I've heard a lot of people saying the play calling sucks. Flores sucks, all of this stuff. Flores is already, uh, Ross, and during the owners' meeting and all this stuff, I think today or yesterday, has already said Flores will be back next year. He's gotten a five-year fully guaranteed contract. They know what they were doing this year. There's no way they'd fire Flores this year. In two more years, if, I give him three years, like I said, three full years. But with the play calling with Rosen in there, you kind of saw the difference between Rosen and Fitz in the backfield. There was different types of play calls because it's two different types of quarterbacks and two different types of mentality. One is a 15-year vet that can read a defense, that can make calls, can change plays, throw p passes, look, down, look off receivers. I mean, DBs do his thing. And the other guy has been on a team last year who sucked and he couldn't do much. And then this year, he's got a new playbook, a new offensive coordinator's fifth, and he's struggling a little bit. So the play calling has to be accustomed to certain players. So he ha makes a great point when he says that the play calling has not been the problem. It hasn't. And we've been very low in the NFL when it comes to ranking and penalties, TNT wall. Um, so, you know, it has, it's not the coaching. It really has to do with a young and experienced team and building from the ground up and all that jazz. So thank you, Zachary, for the comment. Again, I will give you guys a full breakdown of what I think about the quarterback change. I'll give you guys a full breakdown on the injury reports, give you a full breakdown on everything Friday from my preview video. So be sure to check that out. I'm going to say the whole subscribe thing in a little bit, but be sure to follow me on Twitter. A lot of you guys have been following me on Twitter. I'm almost at 1,200 Twitter followers. Thank you guys so much. If you don't have a Twitter, don't feel like you need to make one to follow me. But if you already got one, be sure to follow me on Twitter. I love having conversations with you guys as soon as news breaks, as soon as I get some stats, all that stuff. I retweet it, give you guys my opinion on it, all that stuff. So be sure to follow me on Twitter. I know I keep telling you this, but I'm going to do more on Instagram, I promise. Be sure to check out the Bit Boys. That's my second channel with gaming. Great stuff over there. Halloween games. Most of you already think is coming out this weekend, so I'm going to do a video for you guys this weekend. 
And I'll put that up, most feared gameplay, I'll open up some packs, try to get some of these most feared cards. Give this video a thumbs up. Give this video a thumbs up because you like these pick videos. These pick videos are my least viewed videos. <laughs> so I feel like I don't, I can't tell if you guys like these pick videos or not. So by giving this video a thumbs up and, you know, getting the thumbs up up there, it shows me that you guys like these videos. So I'll keep doing these videos. Also give this video a thumbs up because you're just, you're having a good day today. Yeah, give me a thumbs up for that. Also, be sure to check out Sportscaster and to check out uh, DolphinsTalk.com. DolphinsTalk.com is a great site. It has all this other Dolphin content on it. It has my content on it, TD Fins Talk. Um, Ron has an article on there. He's a writer for them. There's a ton of different writers, podcasts. Be sure to go check that out. Sportscaster is also a live streaming site that I also do while I live stream here. So be sure to check that out as well. Other than that, hit that subscribe button. If you want to see Friday's video and you want to see my thoughts on the change of quarterback and my thoughts on who's going to win the game, hit the subscribe button. Also, hit the bell, and when you hit the bell, it'll say either standard, all, or none. Hit all on the bell, and then you'll guys be able to see when I go live, when my videos come up, and all that stuff. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell. But other than that, I will see you guys Friday, which is tomorrow, with my preview video on the Dolphins and Bills. But like usual, stay classy. Fins up.